Okay. Welcome, welcome everyone to our next class in this little series on the chakras. Today we're talking about Vishuddha Chakra, the throat center. So just sort of recapping, reminding ourselves of the stepwise process that we've been moving through. Um, we started with very earthy qualities, very grounding activities at Muladhar at the base of the spine and then gradually ascended up the column of the, the energy flow to Svadhisthan at the level of the sacrum, where we were into more fluid actions and thinking about um, our deep held uh, impressions and, and memories of, of the past. We moved through our fire center at the navel, Manipur Chakra, and the heart center where, you know, let's face it, if the whole community could be more um, centered in their heart, what a better place the world would be. No names mentioned. Um, today we're ascending further to the throat center, Vishuddha. And it's like we're stepping up the ladder of the quality, the refinement, the subtlety of the energy. So once we've um, paid some attention to opening our heart and feeling that, you know, this heart-centered um, place is, uh, you know, really the best place to live our heart, live our lives, then we can consider the possibilities. The possibilities, here, here we're welcoming uh, Lynn, I guess. So on an iPad, um, we're welcoming the possibilities that open to us um, with this more refined, more subtle energy of the throat. Let's um, begin our class with our invocation. So sitting upright, let's just take a few breaths, raise the arms up, lengthen your spine. So reach up out of your seat and then exhale, lower the chin, arms come down. We'll do that twice more. Inhale, draw the spine up taller. Exhale, lower. So keeping your shoulders comfortable as usual. One more act to open the chest, lengthen the spine. And now bring your palms together. Thumbs just resting on the chest, on the breastbone, and take a breath. Oh. May we be protected together. May we be nourished together. May we create strength and abundance. May we work together with great vigor. May we grow in clarity, wisdom, and peace. Let's do it one more time. Take a breath. Om. May we be protected together. May we be nourished together. May we create strength and abundance. May we work together with great vigor. May we grow in clarity, wisdom, and peace. Okay, let's think about Vishuddha Chakra and we'll refer to the mandala. So the ancients used these mandalas to convey a whole depth of meaning. So each one contains a geometric symbol, which is sought to sort of illustrate um, what's happening to the energy. Um, the colour was, was an aspect to be noted. The presence of, of deities and what they might symbolise, because all of the deities have 
sort of um, very symbolic connections. And um, usually there's an animal present. So the, the feature that was used as a focus for meditation was the geometric symbol in the center. So for um, when we come to Vishuddha, there seems to be no geometric symbol at all, but the animal is present is the the white elephant. This time, the, the same elephant that was um, in present in mace, the, the base chakra, Mulata. Let's see. I'll open up my reference book. This is a lovely book about the chakras, which I have recently acquired, called Chakras, Energy Centers of Transformation. And the author is Harish Johari. So it, right in the middle there, there's a, a color section showing all of the um, mandalas. So I sent you the symbol for, um, for this chakra, Vishuddha. There's a, a bija mantra, a sound symbol, but there's no actual geometrical symbol except perhaps for that full moon behind the figure. So we have um, Shiva with five faces. So he's the one with the flowing blue locks representing the Ganga, the, the sacred Ganges River. And he, he, this version of Shiva is like the combination of all of the Shivas that we've had in the previous um, four chakras. And the fact that he has five faces signifies that he is omniscient. He can see everywhere. He can see in every direction. And the feminine deity also has five heads, five faces. And um, she, she has five heads and, and signifying that she has control over the five elements. So, of course, we've moved up to the fifth element of ether when we consider this, this chakra. She also has control over the five senses, so our sense of taste and touch and hearing and smell and whatever the other one is. <laughs> Fill me in. I've forgotten. Taste, touch, hearing, sight and smell. That's it. And um, she still has a couple of weapons or a, a weapon and a skull. So there's still a bit of work to do. She's holding a, a string of beads, a mala to help her meditation and a sacred scroll. This deity's name is Shakini, and she's the one who bestows the cities. The cities in uh, traditional yoga speak are the amazing powers that were always, you know, part of folklore and, and really have been relegated to um, children's stories now well for example harry potter um, the power to um, be in different places at the same time or the power to make yourself very very small or the power to make you make yourself gigantic these these um are the sort of extraterrestrial amazing powers that shakini can bestow and the elephant, he's um, well, in this image, he's grayish color. In some traditions, he's depicted as white, signifying that he's purified the animal instincts or that we, through our work, tend to be should have um, purified our animal instinct. And the power is now in the mental realm rather than um, solely in the physical realm. Now, Shiva in, in um, the tradition, he's, he's uh, very much concerned with all of the, the aesthetic parts of life, the, the um, creativity of making music, of singing, of dancing, you know, all of the creative art forms. So having 
uh, Panchavakra Shiva or the Shiva with five faces signifies that um, this chakra is very much connected with our exp expressive creative abilities. So the ability to write poems or to sing beautifully or to enjoy dance or to appreciate art, um, all of these sort of creativity aspects of our life, the, the forms of expression um, are connected with Vishuddha. So the very important vagus nerve is um, around the throat and has branches down into the abdominal organs can, and, and its major function is to send sensory messages from the trunk up to the brain. So I think it's 80% of the fibers of this important nerve are efferent fibers. They take messages up to the brain and then the other 20% of fibers bring um, actions, uh, instructions for actions down into those organs. So we're going to begin with um, just sitting upright in your chair and make an effort to draw your chin in. So resisting that um, common posture where we tilt our head forward to look at the screen or read the book or look at our kitchen bench. Draw yourself upright, looking straight ahead, and take a breath here. And we're going to imagine that there's a dot on the chin and a dot on each shoulder. And as we exhale, we're going to bring those two dots a little closer together. So exhale, drop your chin down to one shoulder and inhale, lift up to the center. And exhale, two dots coming closer on the other side. And inhale, lift up. So it's very simple action. And as you drop your chin down on the exhale, look to your shoulder and just notice the angle that how far away from the shoulder from the alignment of your shoulder, your chin comes. And just very gently and rhythmically keep this going. And maybe you know, after a while, you may be able to increase the angle of the head turn. But keep it very smooth and rhythmic. So I'm going to turn side on. So, you know, if, if I was just sort of relaxing, I'm sure my head comes forward a little. But if I'm making a, a tremendous effort to be more upright and then bring my chin down, maybe I'm better aligned with my shoulder. So we get into this forward head posture with most of our daily activities. And posture is a tremendous indicator of well-being and also longevity. So I encourage you to try this exercise in front of a mirror yourself during the day, just to check how upright you are and whether you can draw yourself up very tall. When the neck is, is more, um, when the head is better balanced above the trunk, so the neck is in that natural um, inward curve, then nerve impulses are better able to travel freely up the spine, brain to body, body to brain. So the more you slump forward, you know, the more difficult it is for the transmission of nerve impulses, the more you compress your chest, make breathing difficult. So just that simple act of drawing yourself up tall so that your 
sternum lifts, making more space in the upper chest, enables you to focus on a, a, um, a full, easy breath, but you don't have to struggle. Let's sit for a little longer and do some Ujjayi breathing. Ujjayi is the breath called the ocean sound or um, the throat breath. So we're going to just imagine a very slight contraction at the glottis at the back of the throat. You could place your hand on the base of the throat. It's quite um, sensitive and tender. And slow your breathing down and you'll feel the vibration at the, um, around the voice box, the larynx. It more or less feels as though you're drinking each breath. You can feel the, the friction as the breath slides down past that narrow opening. And if you wish, add the slow head turn. So keep going with that slightly constricted throat. And as you exhale, Drop the chin towards one shoulder. Slow the breath down. So you're conscious of that feeling of friction in the throat. Bringing more focus, more attention to Vishuddha. And then let that go and let's do some shoulder rolls. So loosen up, shoulders coming forward and rolling down and back. So pull them forward, then lift and roll down and back. Pull forward and lift up and down and back. And feel what is moving in between your shoulder blades as, as you do this. And pay particular attention to the pulling down and squeezing your shoulder blades together towards the spine. And then come back to your seat and we'll do a few little movements. So sitting upright, head above your trunk, take a breath in and raise your right arm up to the ceiling as, as, as is comfortable and then turn your head left as you bring the arm down. It just comes back to your thigh or your lap and then the second side. Head is centred as you lift up. And then turning to the right as the left arm comes down. And again, inhale, look up a little, lift the chin slightly, and then bring the chin down to the left shoulder as the arm comes down. And inhale, center, lift the chin, look up. And then chin to the right shoulder as your left arm comes down. Do that again. Look up, lifting right arm. And then chin to left shoulder as your right arm descends. And the second side, look up. And then chin to right shoulder. And center, pause there. The mantra, the bija sound symbol for um, Vishuddha is hung. It, it sounds like H-U-N-G, hung. We're going to chant that as, as we make a movement. So bring your palms together in front as though like a little cup. 
and take a breath in and reach your right arm low to the side. Look to that right arm and then exhale. Bring your palms back together. Your cup is intact. And then inhale, left arm to the side and low. And look to the left and then come back. We're going to chant the mantra, Om Hung Namaha. Salutations to the ether element as we exhale. Om Hung Namaha. Om Hung Namaha. Om Hung Namaha. Om Hung Namaha. Let the hands come back to the knees. More shoulder shrugging. And then we'll come to the mat on the floor. So I'll clear my chair away. Make sure I get the right view. Come on to hands and knees. And let's do some loosening of the lower spine. So in tabletop, circling around. Hips are circling, elbows bending. in both directions. And then some chakra vakasana. So begin with shoulders above wrists, hips above knees. Inhale, lengthen your neck. So just look out in front somewhat without lifting the chin too high, but the neck is long. And then exhale, tuck the chin to the chest and slowly move your hips back. At your own pace, come forward. Back of the neck is long. And then pulling up the belly, chin to chest, lengthening the spine. Twice more. Make sure you add that little compression of chin to chest at the beginning of the exhale. That's very specific for Vishuddha. On the next exhale, if you wish, lift up into downward facing dog. Chin towards your chest. And then inhale, knees down, long in the back of the neck. Exhale, either to child pose or up into downward facing dog. So keep going, choosing, maybe alternating between child pose on your exhale or making that more vigorous action, lifting up into downward facing dog. So once again, go through that little inhale, exhale movement in a way of your choice. Take a pause in child pose.
and then come forward again and we'll use just the leg action of our superwoman balance. So inhale, push back through your right heel. So strong and dynamic through the hip and the leg. And then exhale, bring the knee towards your chin and do that four times. So driving down through that right heel, we'll keep working on the same side. The foot is flexed. So it feels like you're pushing out through the heel. The shoulder stays above the wrists. And on this one, we're going to stay in that extended position. So let's take three breaths. So maintain that strong hip action, all the muscles around the hips, lower back supporting your leg out there in space. And then bring the knee under, rounding the back, chin to chest. Pause in child pose. See how you feel. And then coming for the second side, are you ready? We're going to inhale, back of the neck is long, shoulders wide. X, drive back through the left heel. Under the chest. Sorry, that should be inhale. Driving back strongly. Engage the muscles around your glutes. Exhale, under the chest. Push and hold. Support the weight of the leg. And then chin compressing at the base of the throat. Last push out through the heel and then underneath the chest. And this time we'll stay and hold the action. So if your wrists are uncomfortable, plant your fists on the floor instead of flat palms. Firm the muscles in your hip joint, all around that hip joint, glutes, lower back. And then release, sink back into child pose. Pause, see how you feel. And then we're coming up onto both knees. Let's do a few lift offs. So bring your dominant side leg forward, fingertips just touching, toes tucked under at the back and lift and straighten the back leg and come back down, fingertips to the floor. We'll do that three times. So move your weight forward, push off with the back toes, straighten up and then back to the floor. One more on this side. Look forward, so your eyes lift to help you lift up and back down. Change sides. Non-dominant side forward. Tuck the toes under at the back. So use the action of eye movement coming forward along the floor as you lift and push firmly down through the toes at the back. Again. So you're coordinating lots of actions, action of eyes, strong action of legs and the toes pushing into the floor. I missed that time. And then come all the way up to standing. And after that adventure, circle around and loosen again. That is a simple movement that is so critical to our staying strong and trying to um, take care of our our asymmetry, the, the difference between our strong side and our weaker side. And 
you know, if you've got any, um, the next logical step is to strengthen up the weaker side. So it's always my left side, which doesn't, you know, seem to come under the same control. I have to do more for my left side. Lift offs are good. Sit and stand out of a chair is good. The lift offs where we put all the effort into one side is particularly useful for evening up asymmetry. Okay, let's do a version of Warrior One. Tell me, have we ever had a class where we don't do Warrior One? I don't think so. Step up with your right. Well, let me tell you about the practice. We're going to inhale, bend the front knee, and we're going to stay here and hold the breath in, maybe three seconds. And then we'll exhale, straighten, clasp behind. Oh, sorry. And stay upright with the arms drawn back. And then we'll take another breath in. And then we'll gently fold forward. So it's going to be slow and careful. I'll guide you. So arms by side. Activate the hip muscles to keep you steady and balanced. Your feet are spread wide, hip width apart. Take a breath in, bend the front knee. Raise both arms up. Hold the breath in. Exhale, straighten the front knee, clasp the hands behind your back. Inhale here and draw the arms outwards away from your back. And then exhale, hinge forward from your hips, drop your chest down low, as low as you want to go. And then release, bend the front knee. Sweep the arms up overhead again into warrior one. And exhale, release, straighten the leg, arms by side. So the two asanas in the one sequence. Inhale, raise the arms, lift the gaze, hold the breath in. Exhale, lower the arms, straighten the leg, clasp behind your back. Inhale, draw the arms out, open the chest. Exhale, hinge forward from your hips, lower the chest, lower the crown. Front leg is straight. And then inhale, bend the front knee, sweep the arms up overhead, back to warrior one. Exhale, arms by side. Take a breath in and out. We'll do it one more time. Inhale, sweep up. Hold the breath in. Exhale, tuck your chin. Clasp the hands behind your back. Inhale, draw the arms outwards, open the chest, very broad across the chest. And then chin tucked in, hinge forward from your hips, lift up the arms, lower your chest. So you're sort of laying your chest down over the thigh and stay for a few breaths. Then release, bend the front knee, sweep the arms up very softly this time. Elbows bent and let it go. And pause. See how you feel. Observe the sensations. And just give a shake. Everything shaking. Shake out your legs, shake out your shoulders and arms. So there's a lot of control, a lot of balance. Um, what was I going to say? I've forgotten. Um, you know, the, the very act of lifting to look up and then lowering the chest, lowering the chin to chest is helpful for this part of your body. 
um, we're using our leg strength, our, our balance, our um, that the, all, many muscle groups are involved. Step up with your left. Again, width across your stance, hips facing directly forward. Just looking out in front of you, take a few breaths and mentally rehearsing. So just going through that little order of the proceedings in the sequence. So it's like you're preparing the nerve connections so that you can successfully accomplish each of the movements. Inhale, bend the left knee, raise the arms up. Hold the breath in. Exhale. Straighten the leg, clasp the hands behind your back. Clasp the other way, so the other thumbs on top. And inhale. Stretch the arms back away from your hips. Open the chest. Exhale. Keep the front legs straight if you can. And lower. Bring your chest and shoulders down and the crown. And then release your arms. Bend the front knee. Sweep all the way up to the ceiling again into warrior one. Open the chest. Relax the arms down by your side. So, of course, always taking care of shoulders to be kind to them, not to force any movement that's a strain. Again, inhale, bend that left knee. Uh, maybe a V shape for your arms that still opens the chest, kinder to the shoulders. Ex hold the breath in. And then exhale, straighten the front leg, clasp the hands behind the other clasp and fold all the way down into Pajvottanasana. So a slow controlled movement. And then bend and release all the way up to the ceiling. And let it go. When we hold the breath in, that has a very that has a brahmana effect, an, an energizing effect. So it sort of boosts our, our feeling of energy and dynamism. So we'll do the same again. Inhale, raise your chest, open out, and hold the breath in. Exhale. Straighten the leg. Clasp with your alternative clasp. And I forgot to say, <laughs> inhale, draw the arms out. So chest is wide. And then exhale, fold down into Pashvatanasana. And we'll stay here for a couple of breaths. And then release, bend the front knee. Sweep open again, open your chest and then lower the arms, straighten the leg, step the back foot up, stand in Tadasana, a few steady breaths. Take a breath in, bring the dot on your chin towards the dot on one shoulder. And then inhale, center. Exhale, chin towards the other shoulder, staying very tall and strong with fabulous upright posture. Exhale, chin to one shoulder. Inhale, center. Exhale to the other shoulder. Come to the center and roll around. So forward, lift and rolling back, squeezing the rhomboids to pull your shoulder blades into the spine.
Then step your feet wider. We're going into a little triangle. So I have taken my feet a bit wider than my shoulders. I'm going to turn the right foot out. Bring the left foot in. Take the arms out gently and then tilt towards this outstretched right leg. And keep your chest facing directly forward. Inhale, lift, arms extended wide. Let's do that twice more. Exhale, tilt your trunk down towards that outstretched right side. Inhale, lift, keep your arms strong or at a lower position or cactus arms if that suits you better. Go again. Stay for a couple of breaths. And then lift. Return the hands to your heart. Roll the shoulders. And now move your feet so they're parallel. And we're going to take a back arch forward bend combination. Slide your hands around, thumbs pressing in at the back. Push your hips forward, shoulders back. You might lift your chin a little. And then tuck your chin down, back of the neck long. Slide the hands down, down, down. Coming down in towards, head towards the floor. And then bend the knees. Unwind gently. Lift upright. Take a slow breath in and out. Then turn your left foot out through 90 degrees. And bring your right toes around or the heel goes back so that we're in a triangle base with feet lined up one in front of the other. Inhale, make your shoulders comfortable, but open the chest, maybe cactus arms. I like this way. And tilt over. And your focus is on the tilting action bringing your trunk down towards the thigh. Inhale, lift, go again. Another version would be to take the top hand behind your waist. So fold that top hand to the back where your kidneys are and the chest is still open. One more, inhale, lift. Exhale, tilt to the side. Tuck one hand behind the waist or lift up to the ceiling. Feel the expansion of your chest. And then inhale, release. Lower the arms, make your feet parallel. Big shoulder roll. Forward up and rolling down and back. And we'll do back arch forward bend again with our feet somewhat wider. Thumbs pressing in at the back. Hips forward. Lift your chin a bit. And then release. Tuck the chin in. Hands sliding down the backs of the legs. Down, down, down. And then hands sliding up the inside legs, inside thighs, inside belly, over your chest, cross over, sliding up to elbows, and then come out and then bring your hands to your throat. Let's do our triple warmer smoothie. We always love them. Rub your palms together. Rub so that they're very warm. And then resting softly over your eyes. Breath here. Feel the warmth moving into your eyes. Then bring your fingers right to the midline of your forehead. A little pressure drawing outwards over the eyebrows and temples, circle around behind the ears, give a massage at the base of the skull, and then come down spreading your 
fingers all around your throat. So you're clasping your throat. Where am I? I'm not there. There I am. Oh. And come down onto the heart. Take a breath. Let me tell you a little more about Vishuddha. I'm just resting there with your hands on your chest. Um, Vishuddha, when we have energy at this throat center, then it's like we're on making progress towards self-actualization, towards becoming and expressing who we really are, what is you know, innately us, what is inside, and when the energy is well balanced at the throat center, then, then we can, you know, write our stories, then we can write our poems or do our artwork, express our feelings in terms of art or music or dance or other aesthetic um, aspects of our life in creating gardens. I think that's one of my aesthetic expressions, making gardens. Um, if, you know, if you have trouble getting words out, I think this chakra is, for me, the one that is um, the least free, freely moving. So for me, I really have to work at getting my words out, at you know, trying to express what it is that I want to say. So I guess I need to do some more um, of the sort of asana practices that we've been doing. Um, this part of the body is, is it's like it's an important traffic area because, you know, so many nerve messages go up and down our hypothalamus pituitary axis. You know, that's one of the major endocrine um, axis um, for controlling all of the endocrine glands of the body. Our thyroid gland is here and that it's like a pace setting gland for the whole of our metabolism. So it sits across the throat right there at the base. And, you know, some people, especially with aging, might have disruptions to the production of thyroid hormones. And you might be hyperthyroidic or hypo, might have um, insufficient. And it's very hard to balance them because, you know, it's hard to get a measure if you're taking supplementation. Um, our parathyroid glands also sit there and they're the ones that influence our um, calcium uptake and resorption from the bones so parathyroid health is is critical in uh, maintaining our bone density so this part of the body it's like a sort of highway for for all, lots and lots of many important messages and um, perhaps, you know, at this stage of our lives, most of us in this class are not youngsters. Um, now's the time to unleash your expression of your innermost self, to, to sit down and write, to sit down and draw and paint, to create you know, some sort of feeling of um, this is what I, this is what I want to leave. This is what I want people to know about me. This is what I would like my family to understand who I am. It's worth spending a little time thinking about um, how you like to um, express and show your, um, your nature. What is it that you, how, how do you like to spend your time in a way that leaves behind an expression of who you are? How about that? Let's um, move into Shavasana and we'll have a longer meditation and we'll make a little journey through the chakras. So perhaps at some time in your practice, in your meditation, if you're a meditator, you've reached that moment, which is like a still point. Uh, a moment where the breath seems to be suspended, the thoughts seem to be utterly still, the, the still point 
it's like um, a peak experience. And the still point is, is related to Vishuddha Chakra. You know, there's a quote from T.S. Eliot. I can't lay my hands on it. Um, except for the still point, except for the point, the still point, there is no dance and there is only the dance. You know, you can only feel it. You can only feel that moment of stillness and complete inward focus after you have, you know, moved in and out, been out in the world, and then you come inside. So the, you know, the actions of living in the world and doing what you have to do and being with people and in totally involved is one part of life. And then another part of life is leaving that and coming inside. And it's like we come to the still point of quietness where the thoughts for a moment are still. Perhaps even the breath is suspended. And you know, then we're in true deep meditation. So that, that moment of stillness, that still point is, is um, like a peak of our efforts to meditate. So come into Shavasana. Or make yourself very comfortable somewhere. Take a deep breath. And imagine that your spine is a hollow tube. And draw your breath up from the base through this hollow tube towards the crown. And then back down to the base as you exhale and feel the base of your spine firmly supported by the element earth. Mulata chakra is symbolized by a yellow square. Perhaps imagine that you're lying in a yellow field, a yellow field of wheat, or a, you're lying on a yellow blanket on the beach. And then move your awareness up a little to Svadhasthan chakra. In the reproductive area, in, in the sacrum area. And the symbol here is a silvery crescent moon. And the crescent moon has its points curving upwards. And this silvery moon seems to be shedding light across the water. Continue to breathe slowly and smoothly while you concentrate on each chakra. And move up to the navel area where we have Manipur chakra. Imagine here a red inverted triangle. So the triangle is tip is pointing downwards and the element is fire. So perhaps see your inner fire burning brightly around the navel. few breaths at Manipur Chakra.
and then shift your focus a little higher to the heart center, Anahata. And the color here is a sort of smoky green. And there's a hexagon formed by two triangles, one pointing upwards and the other pointing downwards, like a six-pointed star. And the element is air or wind. And the wind of your spirit flows freely here. And you have a surer idea of who you are, your boundaries. your mission in life, what's really significant for you? And then as you bring your awareness up towards the throat area, so level with the base of your throat, but in the spine at the back, the colours here seem to be shifting and changing, like iridescent, purpley, bluey greens. Nothing is constant. There's a white full moon symbol and ether is the element, ether or space. And space is the element through which the vibrations of sound are carried. Vishuddha is related to our sense of expressing ourselves and of hearing. Both of these functions important. And the distinctions of boundaries seem to fade away at Vishuddha. The ethereal element, the most subtle, Akasha, opens up the possibilities for shift, for change. The energy of Vishuddha is really strongly correlated with self-expression, bringing out who you really are, bringing out what you feel, what you think is important. crystallizing and helping you to express. Now just a little visualization. Imagine that you have been climbing in a national park, a beautiful place in nature. You have been climbing the hill and now you've reached the top of a mountain after a long climb. Here you stand looking at a limitless cloudless sky all around you. You feel a part of this vastness. You feel wonderful. It's a truly uplifting experience to stand at the top of the mountain and look out. You're part of the universe.
let your spirit expand into new possibilities. New possibilities for self-expression, for self-actualizing, to bring into reality the perhaps latent interests, the hidden talents, or the unexplored interests. Now it's time to start your descent from the mountain. So you take a deep breath and resolve to put into practice to express yourself. And gently turn, make your way back down the mountain. Now it's time to bring your awareness back to make a few gentle movements or to decide to choose to stay exactly where you are. So if you're ready to return to the group, make a few stretchy movements and gently come to sit. Roll your shoulders. Thank you, everyone. I'm going to hand over to Trish to complete our session this morning. Thank you, Trish. Make sure your microphone's on. Lovely. Thank you, Pam. Another beautiful session. Um, I just thought I'd, I contacted you because I really wanted to um, share with everyone and with you uh, a beautiful ceremony that I went to on Sunday. Um, and just before I share that experience, I also was thinking Vishuddha Chakra, like you, Pam, is some is the chakra that I need to work on a lot. And it's been a long journey to find my my voice. Mm. Um, you know, I think I can share that. Uh, when you're brought up in a household where there's always a lot of volatility and aggression and, you know, my survival mechanism was to be quiet, to retreat and to find uh, safety in that withdrawal of myself into myself. But the, the, the negative aspect of that is that, you lack the confidence then to value and to uh, to value yourself and your way of expressing yourself and your own truth. So, so that's mm. thankfully I think through yoga, definitely through yoga, and through other life experiences of uh, suffering of. Um, uh, physical 
um, emotional, you know, all of those things are grist for self-expression, for resilience. And also I thought about the fact that this last year has, has along with Liz's beautiful ending to one of our lessons previously where she talked about um, the year of truth telling and uh, you know this is this is where the chakra comes in it's listen to my voice hear me um, and uh, so what I attended on Sunday was a ceremony which was actually commemorating marking a year since the March for Justice. Oh, um, yeah. yeah, which which is March the 4th. Mm. And it took place at Parliament House. And it was organised by a group that I belong to, which is called the Women's Climate Congress. And it's a women's movement for collaborative action on climate change. And they had um, their first national event in November um, and there were over 200 delegates from all over Australia attending the online conference and it was so inspiring all women of uh, different ages um, you know I, I thought I'm going to join regardless of I'm not a CEO of one million women who was there. I'm not a doctor of ecology. There were authors, there were, but I'm I'm someone who's passionate about climate change. So I, I want to be involved. So it was a really uplifting time. And the founder, Dr. Janet Sainsbury, organized on Sunday for this beautiful um, ceremony in the grounds of the Australian Centre for Christianity, which just happens to be next door. <laughs> and it was to join with a chorus of women. And the chorus of women oh, is yes. another beautiful group in Canberra. Um, and uh, so they, they were... Um, a, a, a very integral part of the ceremony because in the grounds there's a beautiful labyrinth and the idea was to walk uh, meditatively around the labyrinth um, while they sang their most recent song which is based on a poem by Dorothy Cameron and that's called The Singing Hill and I didn't realise that um, Capitol Hill, where Parliament House is, um, which is referenced in this beautiful poem, The Singing Hill, is actually a women's place in uh, Nambri, Ngunnawal culture. Oh, gee. Yeah, and it's always been very sacred. And um, so you'll hear these beautiful references to it. Uh, in the poem. So I, I'd love to read the poem to everyone. And I just think it's so significant at the moment for women to find their voice. Mm -hmm. uh, young women like Brittany Higgins and Grace Tame, women of all ages, there's a rising spirit, I think, of uh, a need. We know there's a need to transform all sorts of cultures that have been dominated um, by male archetypes of male of, of power and aggression. And mm -hmm. we can see that right now playing out um, with devastating consequences. Mm -hmm. um, so, so here's the poem anyway. Um, the poem is called The Singing Hill by Dorothy Cameron. The men in dark suits with endless disputes sit in the marble temple in the shining edifice built upon the hill. They are the elders of the present day tribe, quite unaware that eons ago the hill was sacred and magic was there. For once it was the singing hill, the hill which sang the earth's Song at the meeting of the ley lines 
and the crossing of the song lines in the centre of the hills of the circling. The song of the earth was the women's song. They were the tribal elders then who knew of the mysteries, who drew down the moon and nurtured the earth and its singing. Unknown to the dark suits shouting within, the women are returning to the centre of the circling, reclaiming their own songs, circling the fountain in the shining edifice, circling the pyramid of the thrusting dome. They return to their own and the chanting is beginning, the humming has begun. With the passing of the seasons, music from the singing hill will transcend the voices of the dark suits shouting their abuse. New tribal elders, the re-emerging daughters, will awaken Gaia and the shouting will be stilled. The healing of the planet will begin. Mm. Gaia's woman energy will link the endless cosmos with the light of inner knowledge and a reverence for the earth. And the daughters of a different dreaming will recover the mystery, rediscover the harmony of the centre of the circling around the singing hill. Oh, gee. Thank oh, you. That's wonderful. That's yeah. so beautiful. Yeah, I just thought you absolutely the right women to share this okay. with. Oh, that's um, just... It was just so beautiful and so mm. moving. And I would really encourage you, what I'd love to do, Pam, is send you the link Thank of you. the chorus mm. of women who've put this to music and it's mm. it's like a humming bee sound. They, they reverberate the idea of the chanting is beginning, the humming has begun. Mm. Please send the link and yes, I'll forward it on. Yeah, yeah, and I'll, oh. I could send you a scan of the, the poem. Please, yes. Thank that you very much, nice. Trish. That was a lovely way. It's, it uh, just makes our group to be more than simply an asana practice, and yeah. it's, um, I think, a really rich experience when we can share you know, our own experiences and interests at the end. So thank you, Trish. That's much appreciated. See you same yes. time next week. Yes, bye-bye, yeah. everyone. Thank, thank you. you, Trish. That was just lovely. Thank oh, you. Good. Thank you, Liz. And thank you, Trish. Very special. Oh. Very special. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you, everyone. See you next next time. Yeah, see you next time. Mm.